guys, I started off pretty good, hey? A slipper of each. Um, got the best I could. So, um, yeah. Um, so I started going public with things, and a lot of things, of course, went south. I knew they were going south. Anyways, um, I knew I was going to lose the kids and things like that. I kept having the threats that um, he's got people in his pocket. I will never, you know, all this stuff. And I didn't expect my sister and him to use my sister and my son, the two people that never even come into our home. Um, hardly. And my son, I was like very surprised after what he's been through and I understand, but you know, everybody's like, oh, Lisa, you've been yelling or whatever. You're always angry and always upset. But I'm upset and I'm angry because trying to pay these bills, trying to keep up with everything, trying to make all of it as important appointments. Like we've been trying to get to, I don't know how many times the Stollery's got a book and his appointments alone. It's constant. We have to constantly reschedule, reschedule, reschedule because Hugo doesn't want to go. Doesn't want to get her feeding pump that we need, the feeding bags we need. Doesn't want to get the van fixed. Doesn't want to fix the house. Doesn't want to clean up the yard. Doesn't want to do anything that can benefit our family or succeed. But will call me a name and say that I'm useless when I try to do something. Then I don't know how to do it. Today I basically had an officer tell me that I am an idiot. Yeah. And that because listening to my sister who has manipulated people and barely has come near my home for 15 years or never sits with me in the stallery to see what I've been through or truly gone through. But will judge me and put label on me to make herself up here. But will tell me straight to my face she resents me for being born because my mom gave me up or gave her up and kept me. I've been crying my eyeballs out all day because I listen to the officers. I'll tell you, go, they're going to get social services. I knew this was going to happen and he's going to take my girls. He's been talking to both his exes, Natalie especially. I mean, if he wanted another relationship, he should have just went for the other relationship. I asked to leave many times. I'm now losing my girls. I sat beside Anna every day of her life for 14 years. Did all her care, tried to get her to go places, tried to get her into school, would do normal things, but Hugo never wanted to. I wanted my daughter to have a better quality of life. I wish she could speak up and tell everybody what was going on truly mm. but everybody will look at why I'm so angry why I'm so upset because I don't know what to do because I'm so hurt inside that someone would do this to me I need to vote so much of your life of who you are and he's using my brain bleed against me I was traumatized. I woke up from a brain bleed and everything, you know, everybody, he just started hitting on me, not even tried to, you know, he started acting like he's great helping me up and down the stairs and stuff. And then he just turned and started using my brain bleed against me. Um, I want to say thank you to the people who are reaching out to me so far. The friends that do know who I am. Yes, I have a strong temper. People know that. I won't back down and I will tell people bluntly what I feel from them. And I'm very direct. My sister's been talking to the whole SMA community. So basically, I have been manipulated all the way around. I'm the one that's been in psychiatry. 
dealing with psychiatrists and social workers and everyone. And they are the ones who've been on the phone with me. Listen to my, you know, I can't even go into a bedroom by myself to have my own therapy appointment on the phone. And the therapist is like, Lisa, that's not normal. My therapist never reported it, stood up for me. Because I have to report that. But now he's gone and I can't say hey. <laughs> because now I have a new therapist and Hugo knows that. So now it's the perfect time. <laughs> all his family's all ready to rescue him. And oh, he, you know, all the French people are running in right away. Oh, Hugo. You poor thing. <sighs> I mean, yes, he's been there to help medically with Ennis at times. But other than that, never has anything to do with her. But now he's sitting beside my daughter. You will go outside, leave her by herself, and smoke. She can have a plug at any time. He won't even know. But I'm the wrong one. I've always been the wrong one. And I mean, if that's the way people want to see it, and that's the way people want it to be, people like my sister, that really blew me away. She sat in a vehicle crying because she was so hurt from the abuse that She's seen me even going through. And then had the audacity to turn around and say that, and say that I don't have a right to be upset. I mean, I mended things with her son, but before, you know, we were paying them and they were coming in and her, two weeks before my surgery, all of a sudden, they're like, oh, your cancer's gone, you know, whatever, I'm, I'm quitting. And I said, okay, fine, but I'm not hiring family no more. I'm done. I'm done trying to ask for help and then you guys sleep all day or play with your baby or, you know, and I try to give everybody a benefit, but I don't get that back. And then when I try to say that that wasn't right, this is what I'm getting from people. And then it's government funding. I mean, if my sister gets Anna, then she's going to get a lot of money. She knows that. She's very money, 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 money. And currently I have... None of that. And I'm not Jennifer Aniston, so I can't be like, oh, you know, look, I got the perfect image, guys. I had gone through a lot. I went through seeing my parents' addictions and abuse and everything like that. Growing up my whole life, you go know all that. And he kept telling me, oh, you're going to get a big surprise, Lisa. You're going to get a big surprise. Just try to leave. Just try to do this. Just try to do that. Tried to leave, and I guess I was, you know, the one proven wrong again. Especially when an officer can degrade you after what you've been through and not even know the actual facts, but stand there and degrade you when I took my camera off. And it's funny, out of all things, when I took my camera off, I was degraded. <sighs> Anyways. I told that officer because you can see he's an alcoholic. Just look at his face and you can tell the coloring of his face alone. I know it from just blinking my eyeball at him. He was raised by an alcoholic. No different. That's why there's no point to ever believe in this system. That's why people like me give up. lost everything now. My reputation was gone a long time ago. That was worked on very well. When you love someone, remember, you do what you can to help them become someone. You help them become a better person and rise up. You want to see the mother of your child glow and be happy for the rest of her life. You want your children to be happy and have experiences and everything that you can give them. So do that. <laughs> Don't be my example of life. And thank you again to those who've reached out to me.
Um, and he will understand that I was in this big panic. For 15 years, scared, alone, no one to talk to. And I talked to a therapist. <laughs> but where it, in 15 years does a therapist bring you? You try to get out on your own and you can't because his finances corrupt your finances. <laughs> it's a gong show. I just did my best and I failed. The only people I'm sorry to is my children. The only thing I wanted was the best for them, and I'm sorry I could have never given them that, and that I was never allowed that opportunity. No matter what I did. But I love my kids more than anybody can ever imagine. I've always just wanted them to be proud of their parents and be proud of their life and be proud of me and be proud of their father and have a good role model. And I failed to provide that. I failed to leave a long time ago. I failed to not see the red flags. And like my son said, I brought this upon myself and I deserve it. So, you go, God, are you what you wanted? I knew it was coming. That's why I figure with social media, I had nothing else to lose anymore. It's all gone. Everything in my life is gone. Everything who I was, everything that I built, everything that I was succeeding so well with. It's all gone. And I don't know how to rebuild without my children, but I'm going to have to. It hurts to know that all you try to do is ask why you can't pay your bills. Why? What's going to happen to us tomorrow? Where are we going to go? But I'm always starting trouble because I'm trying to ask what's going to happen with the bills. What are we going to do about the mortgage? And since my brain bleed, it's just been an excuse. But nobody's ever going to see that. And nobody ever believes that. But it is what it is. I can't change it. People are going to make their own decisions and judgments and sides and... It's usually when it's too late that people realize it's not the case. <laughs> and right now, in my case, it's all too late. <laughs> he took everything in. He has succeeded, and everybody's in a rush to help him and save him. And first really when I learned to survive through that what makes you crazy is the pain the hurt and it not being able to stop and for anyone to see their action and say look Lisa I'm sorry I should have been there more I should have given you more help should have supported you more so you could get through school. You were trying, but yet everybody told me it was a piece of shit. And that I didn't do anything for myself. I did try so many things to do so many things better for myself. Three years I went through depression because of my cancer. When I found out it spread to my lymph nodes. And then when I got hit by the brain bleed, I went into serious trauma. It was scary to feel all that pain and survive through it. And then to wake up and then wonder why when you go through all of that. It 
You think people would have been like, oh my god, you almost died. We need to pull together. The stress must be too much. There must be a lot on your plate. No. And then just call me nasty and evil and weak and bipolar and that I got split personalities. Yeah. But nobody ever said, what would she be like if I ever, you know, just gave her a chance. Opportunity just to understand who she is. See who she is. What is this person capable of? What good qualities do that person have? Instead of belittling them day after day and having everybody just see that and just keep playing and attacking on it. And yes, my mom was hard to live with. But also she wasn't a horrible person at the same time. I mean, she sat with my daughter, gave her attention, talked to her. And yes, her gambling and her online romance scam was a lot for everybody. But that's not my fault. And then I lacked support from that. And just get blamed. And then I asked him not to bring my mom back into my home. But he did bring her back into the home and now he's using that. And I begged him not to. I said we need to find her a different place. But what do I know? I asked to leave a long time ago. I told Hugo, can we please start making arrangements to split up? And, you know, when it was still nice out, I was asking, can we get a sea can or something so we can start putting stuff into storage? And I need to leave. Like, I mean, it's done. There's no more trust. There's no more relationship. It's destroyed. It's all gone. <laughs> He just kept saying, we're going to work it out. What's going to, everything's going to be okay. Go lay down, Lisa. Go lay down. Everything's going to be okay. And I went and laid down. He just worked his little the magic numbers. And anyway, you know, it takes two to fight. And there's no wrong and right or wrong in that. And I'm not going to deny that. And I just want people to know that I really love my kids and I didn't give up on them. And that the reason why I was always fighting so hard was for them, for their needs and for their rights. And I was upset by how everybody just wants the money. And when you say it's not adequate, like you're not getting the benefit from what you've given, you just get called nasty. And wrong and cold and I'm done with it I guess Hugo has my children now got what he wanted succeeded in everything he needed to do and everybody else is just playing with them on it and it's easy because I'm going on social media and things like that documenting everything publicly because I'm tired that there is nothing even when I was a child watch my sister get strangled by a telephone cord and six months later I get put back into my home and the abuser in the home never got treated so I lived with that my whole life and then just to live in my home and hear him call me the same things day after day that my parents called each other and it's exact words. He knew it. Because, I mean, I talked to him. And I said, it's one word I can never stand hearing. And it's exact word he called me day after day. <sighs> People say it's not abuse. It's degrading. Makes you want to just not exist anymore. Because it just <laughs> makes you feel you were no. I wish I would have kept recording today.
And of course, I couldn't call anyone. Heading the long weekend. Everything is closed. Perfect timing. Called them right when I go and I smoke a joint. I went off of all a lot of painkillers because my kidneys were getting fatty and I was having issues and I didn't want to be on them and um, I wanted to try to function and do things with my kids again and that's what I was trying to do when my joints hurt and my body aches all the time and my feet are constantly sore. It feels like I've got broken feet all the time. So I try to run and I try to do my best and I try to keep up and I get exhausted from pain. My hands, everything. And I live with daily pain, so I just deal with it and try to be happy. I try to wake up in the morning, but I get yelled at at 6 a.m. and all night, all being told they can't sleep and that, what time is it? What time is it? Order coffee and. Yeah. And then when you try to sleep because you're exhausted and you're not feeling well, you get yelled at. And try to rest because you're so run down and so exhausted and you can't even rest. <laughs> you have to be up all day long, 24 hours a day doing what he wants. But right now, as people see it, is that I'm the one that's crazy, but I'm crazy because I don't know what to do. And well, this could happen to me again. The pain is just so shameful. I'm so ashamed that I could allow that to happen again. That I couldn't be smarter. And now look at where I'm at in my life. I'm just trying to figure it out again. Start off new again. And I try to make it all positive. And I'm hoping that this journey of mine can be. And I want to say that, you know what? I was about to just want to give up on everything today. And someone reached out to me. It's like, can I talk to you tomorrow? And I said, yeah. And I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, maybe I will go talk to them. And I'm thankful. Because it's unfortunate it's those people who understand what you've been through, what you're going through, what you're facing. Exactly what you do. Go through. That's the saddest part. No one should be going through that thing. You should be really happy to be with the person you're with. You are just happy loving yourself. And that's all I'm going to say anyways, but thank you for the few who have been there. And I'm sorry that my life has gone this way and never, ever had this vision for this. But I've always had the fear that this was going to happen to me again. And it just keeps happening again and again. So anyways, it's one step at a time, guys.